Hello friends, today I am going to teach you regarding the vascular pathology in the hypertension. So we will learn what are the effects of hypertension over the blood vessel, particularly in the kidney. So let's start the discussion. Before I start the discussion, I request you to see the video in the high quality. Uh, you can change the setting in the YouTube so that quality of a video will not get hampered. So first of all, you might know that hypertension is one of the major public health problem. It is one of the most major health public public health problem in the developed as well as underdeveloped country. And if you will not control your hypertension, then it can affect your blood vessel that is known as vascular disease by hypertension. So we will learn in detail. So first of all, when when you will call the case as a hypertension. So the so the patient is hypertensive if his or her systemic blood pressure is more than 140 and diastolic blood pressure is greater than 90 mm of mercury. So if this much elevation is present then the case is labeled as an hypertension and it can affect your blood vessel. You might be surprised that uh, 90 to 95 percent case of hypertension have the no underlying cause. Uh, I mean the cause is idiopathic that is known as essential hypertension. It has been observed that it is related to a high lipid level, high sugar level that is called as metabolic syndrome but no obvious cause is present so that is called as essential hypertension now the hypertension is a common disorder that affect the 25 percent of the population hypertension is one of the major risk factor why need why we need to understand this uh, hypertension because hypertension can lead to sclerosis of the artery it can lead to hardening of the artery so that you can develop atherosclerosis and this atherosclerosis is one of the major cause for ischemic heart disease you can have heart attack due to that it's a cause of heart uh, failure as well it can lead to myocardial infarction and by the sclerosis of the artery in the renal it can lead to renal failure as well that's why you need to understand the effects of hypertension over the whole organs Today we will discuss about the effect over the blood vessel. So as we have discussed, 90 to 95% case is having no cause that is called as essential hypertension. But sometime in a 5% case you can have the underlying cause for hypertension. So that underlying cause include first of all renal cause, second one is endocrinal cause, third one is some cardiovascular cause. Or you can have neurological cause for the development of hypertension. So what can be the renal cause that can lead to hypertension? So the cause can include uh, glomerulonephritis in which there is a presence of hematuria along with hypertension. The cause can be chronic renal disease, polycystic disease. Sometimes renal artery stenosis might be the cause. Uh, Sometimes you can have renin producing tumors as well. So that are the renal cause for secondary hypertension. Sometimes endocrine cause also can be responsible like that of uh, particularly Cushing syndrome. Then you can have aldosteronism. Sometimes congenital adrenal hyperplasia also can be responsible. And sometimes if uh, you are receiving excessive steroid hormones, excessive estrogens, ossipils, then also it can be the responsible. Pheochromocytoma, that is a tumor of adrenal medulla, also can be responsible for hypertension. Uh, thyroid dysfunction, acromegaly, that is excessive growth hormone, also can be responsible for hypertension, which can be the cardiovascular cause. So that cause include co erection of aorta, there can be polyarthritis, nodosa, and sometimes rigidity in the aorta can be the cause for secondary development of hypertension. The psychogenic cause include excessive stress, post-traumatic stress disorder or increased intracranial pressure can be the cause of hypertension. So that is all regarding the cause of hypertension. This cause will remain same for the every organ. So remember that all causes, 90 to 94% case are idiopathic and the rest can be uh, renal, endocrine, cardiovascular or neurogenic.
okay so now we will see uh, the effect of hypertension over the blood vessel i mean we will understand the morphology of the blood vessel in the hypertensive patient so you have to remember that uh, blood vessel can be affected in a two way if you are only having the hypertension persistent long term hypertension that is systolic blood pressure greater than 140 and diastolic blood pressure greater than 90 that is called as a benign persistent hypertension if you are having benign persistent hypertension then with the time in the blood vessel you can develop homogeneous pink highline thickening in the arterial wall just see here in the arrow this is the pink homogeneous highline material deposition so the homogeneous pink highline thickening of the blood vessel will occur so that the structure of the structural detail of the artery or vein is lost and there will be luminal narrowing you can see that lumina is the narrow so this particular change is known by the name highline arteriosclerosis arteriosclerosis means hardening of vessel and the highline material is deposited that's why the name is given as an highline arterial sclerosis so that is the most important change seen in the blood vessel now what can be the pathogenesis of this development of highline arteriosclerosis so remember that uh, pathologies include first of all path pathogenesis include first of all the leakage of plasma component because of endothelial injury okay so this is your blood vessel and here is the endothelial lining you might be familiar with that so if and here there is a lining of plasma the endothelial is lined by plasma periphery is lined by plasma and in the central there will be presence of various cells clear so if this endothelium is getting damaged then this plasma can be leak into the outer surface and it can get deposited so that's the reason for deposition of highline material sometime what happened the second mechanism is thought to be because of chronic hemodynamic stress chronic hypertension your uh, smooth muscle can get activated to produce excessive extracellular matrix particularly collagen and hyaline like material so the activated smooth muscle can produce excessive extracellular matrix that can be responsible for development of hyaline arteriosclerosis so that's regarding the pathogenesis of that now suppose if you are not controlling your hypertension and in some of the 5% case of hypertension 2 to 5% case the blood pressure can be rise up to a particularly systolic blood pressure can rise more than 200 mm of Hg and your diastolic pressure can increase for greater than 120 and you can have symptoms of renal failure and multi-organ dysfunction that hypertension is known as an malignant hypertension that is known as malignant hypertension and such malignant hypertension will be responsible for another pathology in the blood vessel here you will not see highline arteriosclerosis here there will be presence of hyperplastic arteriosclerosis so we will understand what is hyperplastic arteriosclerosis in malignant hypertension so it is the concentric laminated thickening of the arterial wall just see here this is the hyperplastic arteriosclerosis this figure i have taken from the pathological basis of robbins so see there is a presence of laminated thickening of the arterial wall this is the laminated thickening so why such laminate lamination develop so that is because of proliferated smooth muscle cells i am talking regarding smooth muscle cells of the artery you might be familiar that artery is made up of three layer tunica intima media and adventitia this is your intima and in the media there is a presence of smooth muscle so i am talking regarding proliferation of the smooth muscle that can lead to lamellated concentric thickening of the artery and sometimes the basement membrane can be reduplicated. So this two reason is, 
is responsible for the laminated thickening of the arteriolar wall remember so such characteristic lesion this whole lesion is known by the name hyperplastic arteriosclerosis but this laminated thickening is known by the name onion skin proliferation that is known as onion skin proliferation and second most important one here there will be endothelial injury so the plasma fibrinogen and fibrin material will get leaked out so you can able to see the fibrin material deposition and such type of necrosis is known by the name fibrinoid necrosis so you can able to see the fibrinoid necrosis in the hyperplastic arteriosclerosis so remember these two most important change onion skin proliferation and the fibrinoid necrosis that is a characteristic of hyperplastic arteriosclerosis now what can be the pathogenesis of hyperplastic arteriosclerosis okay so one pathogenesis is uh, damage of the endothelium the damage of endothelium will lead to leakage of the peripherally lined plasma so that is a increased permeability of vessel to the fibrinogen and the other plasma proteins and the platelet deposition that can be the one mechanism of hyperplastic arteriosclerosis fibrin might get leaked out from plasma and it can get deposited second interesting mechanism is that here what happen uh, in the vessel uh, centrally there is a presence of uh, platelets platelets rbc and wbc so if because of hypertension there can be endothelial injury you might be familiar that all this arterial sclerosis mechanism is starting because of endothelial injury only so if you have endothelial injury the platelets can get deposited to fill the defect and such platelet and plasma uh, can release one mitogenically activated factor a uh, name is platelet derived growth factor that will be released from the platelet and plasma this platelet derived growth factor is the responsible for smooth muscle cell hyperplasia and because of this smooth muscle cell hyperplasia there will be onion skin proliferation so that is responsible for your hyperplastic arteriosclerosis so this is the figure i have taken from the harsh mohan textbook of pathology this is a schematic diagram to draw in the exams so this is the figure of highline arteriosclerosis on the left side you can able to see the highline material deposition only that is a clear cut case of highline arteriosclerosis but what happen in hyperplastic arteriosclerosis in which there is a concentric laminated thickening of the vessel that is because of smooth muscle proliferation uh, there will be proliferation of your smooth muscle because of platelet derived growth factor so that is responsible for hyperplastic arteriosclerosis and additionally you can able to see the fibrin material deposition that will lead to fibrinoid necrosis and you might be familiar that in the necrosis there will be damage of the membrane so that one important cell will infiltrate around the damaged membrane that is the neutrophils so you can able to see the neutrophilic infiltrate in the necrosis because of membrane damage so that is regarding the morphology of the blood vessel in the hypertension now the benign highline arteriosclerosis and the hyperplastic arteriosclerosis particularly develop in one organ that is kidney the blood vessel changes is prominent in the kidney so if your arteries are getting hard that is known as arteriosclerosis and if such sclerosis involve the small renal arteries and arterioles then such renal lesion is known by the name nephrosclerosis it is known by the name nephrosclerosis so what happen if your renal arteries are hardened so you will get the lead blood blood supply to the kidney and so you can have you can develop eventually your uh, fibrotic glomeruli there can be renal atrophy your glomeruli will be sclerosis so finally it can cause renal atrophy and renal failure so that lesion is nephrosclerosis so suppose you are having the benign hypertension then it will lead to morphology of highline arteriosclerosis 
and that is in the kidney known by the name benign nephrosclerosis that is known by the name benign nephrosclerosis now what happen if because of benign hypertension there is development of highline arteriosclerosis so you will develop contraction of the kidney your kidney will be small in size there will be contraction of the kidney second important point what happen because of chronic hemodynamic stress there will be continuous damage so that there will be eventually fibrosis fibrotic scarring repeated fibrosis scarring can happen and that can lead to sclerosis of your glomeruli it can lead to fibrotic scarring and the contraction of your glomeruli due to fibrosis so what happen your kidney will having the diffuse granular contracted your contracted kidney will having the diffuse granular surface the surface is granular and that is known by the one beautiful lamp that is leather grain appearance so the leather grain appearance is seen in benign nephrosclerosis that can be asked as an mcq okay now you have to remember that afferent arteriole affected most commonly as compared to efferent arteriole so that is also the one at one mcq that which artery will affect commonly in the kidney so the answer will be afferent arteriole okay now suppose if you are having the malignant hypertension then you will develop hyperplastic arteriosclerosis as we have discussed this hyperplastic arteriosclerosis in the kidney is known by the name malignant nephrosclerosis that is associated with the malignant hypertension now what happen in the malignant hypertension you will definitely have your rupture of the arteriole and the capillaries your capillaries and arteriole will get damage so what happen if your arteriole and capillary will get damage then you can able to see pinpoint hemorrhage over the kidney surface if you will inspect your kidney grossly then you will have pinpoint hemorrhage this pinpoint hemorrhage is because of damage of your arteriole and capillary and that is known by the one beautiful name that is known as flea beaten kidney it seems like that your kidney is beaten by the flea that is flea beaten kidney so that is most important mcq as far as the exam point of view flea beaten kidney is seen in the malignant nephrosclerosis okay but you have to remember that it is not the only cause for the flea beaten kidney flea beaten kidney can be seen in other causes as well that include infective endocarditis other causes hanos colin purpura then polyarthritis nodosa then if you have hemolytic uremic syndrome if you have thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura if you have rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis then all these causes also can cause flea beaten kidney malignant nephrosclerosis is not the only cause so what will be the morphology as we have discussed in the malignant nephrosclerosis you will have hyperplastic arteriosclerosis so there will be onion skin proliferation and the fibrinoid necrosis okay thank you very much hope uh, this video will be beneficial to you in making your fundamentals clear regarding the vascular pathology in the hypertension so it's uh, very necessary to control the hypertension in the hypertensive patient to prevent the kidney damage particularly to prevent the nephrosclerotic lesion we need to prevent highline arteriosclerosis and hyperplastic arteriosclerosis like lesion so that is all regarding the vascular pathology in the hypertension if you like my video subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever i am posting the new video uh, thank you very much guys